Well, good evening. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church Bible Study. We are in a bunker at an undisclosed location. We have our shortwave radio ready to go. All weapons are loaded, and uh, our tank is fueled up. Actually, I'm joking. I'm sure you know that. But we are in our he-she hut, and uh, we've been, uh, well, I'll just show you. This is our he-she hut, and we do a lot of cooking out here. And so tonight we're doing a Boston butt roast, and uh, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> And we ground up some Boston butt for sausage. And we've got whole tomatoes that we blanched and we've got sauce cooking now so we can can it. Unfortunately, I didn't know how to use canning salt. I didn't know it was like a lemon substitute and I put too much in, but I believe we can recover from it when it's time to eat. Hey, babe? All right. <laughs> Well, hello everybody, glad you're here, if you're here, I don't know who's here, who isn't, but uh, we're using the cell phone at this time, uh, let's see, well, I see Jasmine's there, I don't see anybody else, but anyway, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, Grace Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening, we thank you for allowing us to be here. Uh, Lord, I pray you watch over our president, protect him and his family. Lord, we pray for Walter, Lord, his surgery today, and I hope everything uh, went well as they expected. And Lord, give him a speedy recovery. Lord, we pray for Brother Raj and uh, Rush Limbaugh and Lord uh, Billy Coates. And Lord, we ask you to... Uh, just protect us in this country, Lord. I know we don't deserve anything, but Lord, we do look to your mercy as a Christian people in the in the churches. Lord, uh, I thank you for bringing my family all home safely. And uh, Lord, be with us tonight as we read thy word, Lord, and we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right. I see a kitty cat up there. Let's see, what you got playing, Jazzy? I'm, um... While that's playing, it's nerd at the main assault. The Father, he showed mercy When he sent down his Son To die for me on Calvary To shed his life's blood That the riches of his glory might be made known to all the vessels of mercy he's prepared for his own. Oh! 
Jasmine, why don't you slide over there next to Megan, and uh, I'll hold this over here for you. And I'm in on the couch, Yo-Yo. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. That'll mm -hmm. work. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Mm -hmm. The Lord, the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be See if I can set this thing back up here. Smell that tomato sauce cooking in that Boston butt in the oven. You know that if I have a man cave, it's got to have a refrigerator and a stove and everything in it. Amen. Amen. And a couch too. <laughs> All right, we're going to be back in Second or uh, First Timothy in chapter three. I think we left off in chapter two uh, last week. And uh, we're going to start in chapter 3. But before we start, I just want to say this. You know, right now our country's in quite a turmoil. Uh, the devils are in the high offices, uh, soon to be. Uh, hopefully not, maybe. But anyway, they've, uh, according to the votes, won the election. Uh, a lot of people are upset. Uh, I'm kind of uh, disappointed, but it ain't over yet till the fat lady sings and, uh, oh, you just sang, didn't you, Megan? <laughs> it's only joking. But uh, it's not January 20th yet, and we don't know what ha God has in store. Amen? I woke up this morning and heard all kind of different things that had happened yesterday evening and all this other stuff, and uh, I just take it with a grain of salt. But I do know this. I don't know what tomorrow ho holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. Amen? Can you say amen to that? Amen. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, God's in control, and if you're close to the Lord like you're supposed to be, He's going to take care of you. And if He doesn't, I mean in the way that you expect them to. Uh, the alternative's heaven. So what do we got to lose? We got a win-win. Amen? Amen. Hey, uh, Brother Jim, I see you're on there. Uh, I hope your shoulder surgery goes well or went well. Yeah, we've been praying for you today and I'm glad you're on there. But, uh, Anyway, whatever does happen, God's in control. And uh, I've been out plowing up a, a garden. I've been doing some canning uh, uh, tonight. That's what we're doing, grinding up some sausage and cooking up some meat. And then we got a big old 20-pound hunk of beef that we're going to make some jerky and stuff. And uh, listen, it's not, it's not because 
we're worried about what's coming. It's because I want to get off the supermarket trail. Uh, if we did have a national disaster in this country, we've got about three days worth of groceries on the shelves. And people will be looking for food. And I want to be able to make sure I can take care of my family and my church members. Amen. Uh, hopefully they're making arrangements to put stuff away and everything, but I'm doing it because I don't like being dependent on the grocery stores anymore. Uh, I'd rather have more natural stuff and do it myself and teach the girls how to do it. Amen. Uh, tonight out here, it was some hard work uh, preparing the meat, blanching tomatoes, cutting peppers and onions. Uh, the girls, uh, Jasmine said she just likes supermarket. <laughs> Amen. But that's why I'm doing it, and, and I just want to be able to teach them how to survive uh, should the necessity come up. And, uh, you know, I've been reading, I found out you can eat a pine tree. That's right, you ain't even got to be a beaver, but you can eat a pine tree. Uh, you can make bread from bark of certain trees. There's other trees that you can eat. Uh, it's really interesting, things that uh, were forgotten with people like my grandfather and them that came through the Great Depression. Uh, I remember Grandma and Grandpa. Grandpa always had a great big garden. And, I mean, he's like my brother Randy. I mean, he could grow a garden. And they canned and they baked their own bread. And he had a cow on the, on the farm. Uh, he worked in the coal mines. But he didn't want to end up like they did in the Depression where people were wandering the country willing to work for a meal if they could get it because we don't have that caliber of morality in the people in this day and age what we have here is people that's going to come out of the suburbs and I mean the cities and on coming to the suburbs of the country and what they're going to do is they're going to try to get what you have uh, they have no morals you see what's going on in this country today so anyway, that's, I just wanted to update you on what we're doing and why we're doing it. And uh, listen, I'm looking forward to making, I, I like cooking. And so being able to make my own sausage and jerky and things like that is exciting to me. And, uh, you know, I, well, I'm not going to go there. It might be insulting, but I'd like to get a couple hogs. <laughs> All right, second, or First Timothy chapter 3. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. You know, I, I hear a lot of preachers say this, that, you know, if you've been double married, then you don't, I mean, if you've been married twice, then you're not the husband of one wife. But... As I go back to when this was written in Paul's day, uh, if you remember, there were people that had uh, more than one wife. Uh, remember, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And there were people with concubines and all. And I know that the preachers today use it. You know, say you were married and you were lost and uh, you got divorced and then you got saved. Uh, do you fit the qualification here of a bishop? Well, that's been up for uh, debate for a long time, but I'm, I'm looking at it now and I'm seeing, well, maybe he was talking about the people that did have more than one wife back in that day, because this is only, it ain't that far from, the, from uh, before Christ came, amen? And people could have more than one wife at that time. Not that they should. I mean, who would want... Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's go on. Not given to wine, no striker. Not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler. Not covetous. Uh, he says, uh, I think it was my preacher said one time, if you knock them out with the first prunch, then you're not a brawler. Hey, Ben? <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> One that ruleth well his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity. If a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall we take care of the church of God? 
not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not in the grave, even though some pastors would rather see them in the grave. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, I'm just joking there, folks. Don't get upset there, deacons. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine. Didn't say they couldn't drink wine, just not given to much. Not greedy of filthy lucre, that's money. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Now, how can these things first be proved if a young man in your church says he gets saved and he's a soul winner and he's out there working in the community for the church and he feels like he's been called to preach? What's the first thing most pastors do? They find him a good Bible college, they say, and send him off to a Bible college. You know what they just did? They just took the cream of the crop from the local church and sent them up to one place that brought in all the other cream of the crops from other local churches. And what did they leave back home? They left the ones that needed to be entertained. The ones that weren't doing the work. It was the job of the pastor to train up somebody under him where he could watch them as their family grows and what they do, and then he sends them out. We've got this thing all backwards. I know there. we said that there's some men that did great work when we were reading out of John the other night talking about Dr. Howard Seitler. Well, the reason he did such a great work is all the cream of the crop from all the local churches got sent to Tabernacle. Amen? That was the job of the local pastors to do, to teach them to bring them up. But he could do a good work because he had people that wanted to win souls, that wanted to serve God. Amen. And they took him out of the local church while the local pastors went out golfing and, and uh, playing and boating, amen, instead of taking time trying to raise up young men under him. <clears throat> Enough on that rant. He says, oh, let me back up. Ruling his own will. For they that have used, let's see, for they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. Chapter 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. I mean, just look around you. You see people leaving uh, independent Bible-believing churches because they weren't taught anything, and they go join up with the false Jehovah's Witnesses or the, the morons, amen, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and and uh, they fall into all these occults and, and uh, everything. Why? He says, because some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, oh, and don't leave out uh, the Pope either, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, how? If it be received with thanksgiving. I told you I got a Boston butt in the oven. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these, 
of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men. But look at this last part of this statement. Especially of those that believe. God in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for the whole world. But it's only going to do those that believe any good. Amen. I hope that you are a believer. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Doctrine is just simply teaching. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Excuse me one moment. Uh. All right. See how much time we have? Yeah, we got time. Let's go to uh, chapter 5. The Bible says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. Amen. To requite their parents. You know, years ago, people uh, on the farms and all, they raised some big families. And when the parents got older and they couldn't function like they needed to anymore, then the children would take care of the parents. But a few years back, parents started putting their children in a daycare. Now the children are putting the parents in a daycare called a nursing home. They don't have time to take care of them. They, don't, they weren't brought up to, to requite their parents. Amen. Uh, the children were left to themselves. Uh, people were having smaller families. I wish I'd have had 20 now. Amen. But I didn't know any better when I was younger. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And you know, I'd like to say this about requiting your parents. You know, we, we adopted Jasmine and Katie and Megan. Katie uh, took off for the better life, she said. Amen. I don't know how it's a better life in a homeless shelter with a pedophile. Anyway, let me go on. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, Megan's here and Jasmine, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't know what to do without them. They hang in here and they help me. And today Jasmine tilled up the garden. She got on the tractor and tilled the tractor, helped me uh, hook up the, the tiller to the tractor and uh, did all these things. And Megan, she come out and she helps mom and, uh, they come out here and help me with the canning and everything. And and uh, I don't know what I'd do without them. I guess I'd just sit in a wheelchair and suck my thumb. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow. Verse 5. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusts in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, 
He hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old. If she's younger than 60, let her fend for herself, right? <laughs> Having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works. If she had brought up children, if she had lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she had relieved the afflicted, if she had diligently followed every good work. But the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And withal they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also in busybodies speaking things which they ought not. They don't have to go house to house anymore. They can go Facebook to Facebook or phone to phone. Amen. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house. You, you catch that, right? Guide the house, ladies. Not run it. Guide it. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachably. Now, I know what some of you are thinking already. Some of you have to run it because the husbands won't. Amen. I'm with you. I got it. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Now, the double honor there is a paycheck. That's what he's saying. How do you know, preacher? Look at the next verse. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Now, does God care for oxen? Yea, he does. They eat of the field as they're plowing it. He says, Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. If you're going to receive an accusation against an elder, you better have two or three witnesses with you. Amen? Or in front of you when they say it. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others may, that others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Now look what he tells Timothy here. Drink no longer water, but... Use a little grape juice for thy stomachs. Well, it didn't say that, did it? Oh, well, of course, that's what it means. That's what everybody tells you. But we're not going to get into that. We'll just read it like it's supposed to be read. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Do you know what grape juice will do to your stomach if you've got infirmities? <laughs> you better be heading for the throne. <laughs> Some men's sins are open beforehand going before the judgment. Some men, they follow after. Likewise also the good works of some are manifest, are manifest beforehand. And they that are otherwise cannot be hid. All right, let's see. It is 729, and we've got one chapter left, and so let's just go ahead and finish it, and we'll be done with First Timothy, all right? Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Let the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Now, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of honor. You see, slavery was not a sin. Men stealing was. He says, and they that have believing masters let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. And if any man teach otherwise, he consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, Perse disputing, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. You know, a lot of people say, well, it must be God. God must be in. Look how they're prospering. Look at the money they're making. He says, 
supposing that gain is godliness from such, withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, it didn't say money was the root of all evil, my friend. It says, for the love of it, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show his the blessed and only potentate. Listen, that parking spot over at the Masonic temple that says potentate, amen, he is nothing. It says that the Lord, amen, that Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, he said he who is blessed and only potentate, and King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Did we not say when we started with all the turmoil in this country and all, that the main thing that you should do is have a good relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbereth nor sleepeth. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred, erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. The first to Timothy was written from Laodicea, which is the chiefest city of Phygia, uh, in Pacadia. Pacadia now. Amen. Get it out there in a minute. So that ends 1 Timothy. So we got through that book of the Bible. Uh, the first two chapters, I think, were the roughest, I think, for some of you. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Grace, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the folks here. We're glad that uh, Walter came through the surgery and is at home resting. Lord, we pray for Brother Jim Bradshaw. And uh, Lord, we pray for our president and uh, Lord Rush Limbaugh and those that are ill. And Lord, thank you for watching over me and my family. And Lord, keep us from presumptuous sins and make us go and pass of righteousness for thy name's sake. For it's in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right, God bless you, and have a wonderful and safe night, and uh, praying for Tana and her family. Amen? All right, y'all have a good one.